Hello everyone and welcome to Dynamics Lectures. In this lecture we will introduce the concept of angular momentum and we will derive an expression for the rate of change of angular momentum. But before I start I would like to mention a few things. First of all, the main motivation for creating this video tutorial as well as the complete series on dynamics is that I noticed that a number of people in engineering practice as well as students have many misconceptions about dynamics. People often have misconceptions or poor understanding of even basic laws such as Newton's laws or the law of conservation of energy. And consequently, I'm creating this video tutorial to clarify a number of important concepts. One of these important concepts is actually the concept of angular momentum. But before I start with explanations, I would also like to mention that it took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as almost 300 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube page. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Let's start. We are considering a point mass or a particle denoted by a dot shown over here and we assume that this particle moves in three-dimensional space and that it describes a certain trajectory described by this blue line. So the particle moves like this. A very important concept in the dynamics is the concept of momentum. Momentum. The momentum of this particle is defined as the product of the mass of the particle and the velocity vector of the particle. That is, the momentum is actually a vector. Let us graphically represent the momentum. First of all, let us represent the velocity graphically. For that purpose, I will change the color. I will use, for example, a green color. We know that velocity is always tangent to the trajectory. Consequently, this is our velocity. To construct the momentum, we simply take the velocity and we multiply it by m. And here I will assume that m is larger than 1. This implies that the momentum will look like this. Here is our momentum. The momentum vector is collinear with velocity vector. And here it is. To define an angular momentum of this particle, we first need to introduce the coordinate system. And let us consider the coordinate system shown over here. x, y, z. And let the center of this coordinate system be the point O. To define the angular momentum, we need another variable. And that variable is the vector r. Here is the vector r. It is the vector from our particle to the point O. And here is r. Now we are ready to define the angular momentum. Angular momentum is actually moment of a momentum. So let's write it down. Angular momentum is a moment of particle momentum. Let's analyze what I said. I'm saying that angular momentum is a moment of a particle momentum. So I need to take the particle momentum and I need to compute the moment of this vector with respect to the point O. Let's do that. 
The angular momentum is usually denoted by H letter, and H is the capital letter, and we will define it over here. H, and we need to specify in the subscript the point, since the moment is always defined with respect to a certain point, and it's a vector, since a moment is a vector. So, what is the definition of a moment of a vector? It is a cross product between R and momentum. And here it is. This is the definition of the angular momentum. Next, let us compute the components of our angular momentum vector. For that purpose, we will use the definition of the vector cross product. But before we do that, let us write the vector r and the velocity vector v in terms of their components. Vector r has the following components, rx, ry, and rz. Similarly, the velocity vector v has the components vx, vy, and vz. Next, we'll use the definition of the vector cross product in order to compute the components of our angular momentum. First, let's decompose our angular momentum vector in its components. We have that HO is equal to HOX, X component, HOY, Y component, and HOZ, Z component. Then, from the definition of the vector cross product, we have a determinant, and the first row of this determinant consists of the unit vectors of the x, y, and z axis. That is, we have i, j, k, i is the unit vector of x, j is the unit vector of y, and k is the unit vector of z. Then, in the second row, we have the components of the vector r. We have rx, ry, and rz. And in the third row, we have the components of our linear momentum. That is, we have mvx, mvy, and mvz. By using the basic calculus rule that involved the matrix determinant, we obtain that hox is equal to ry, times mvz minus rz multiplying mvy. Similarly, we have that hoy is equal to, let's see, let's see what happens. Here is j, and we have rz multiplying mvx, and we have minus Rx multiplying MVZ. And finally, HOZ is equal to Rx multiplying MVY minus RY multiplying MVX. Here, we also need to geometrically construct our vector HO. To do that, we will simply sketch a plane formed by the vector mv and the vector r. And here is the plane. To repeat, this plane is formed by mv and r. And HO is simply perpendicular to this plane. That is, HO graphically looks like this. It is perpendicular to R and this vector that's parallel to MV. Now that we have a solid understanding of the concept of angular momentum, let's see what is the first derivative of 
angular momentum with respect to time. That is, we want to compute this expression, d dt of ho. To find this derivative, we will use this formula. First derivative of the vector product a cross b, where a and b can be arbitrary vectors, is first derivative of a cross b plus a cross first derivative of b. Let's apply this formula to this expression. Consequently, we have dr dt cross mv plus r cross m times d dt of v. Okay, let's see what happens over here. The first derivative of the vector r with respect to time is simply velocity. Consequently, we have velocity cross m times velocity plus r cross, let's see what do we have over here, m times, and what is the first derivative of velocity with respect to time? That's obviously acceleration, a. Mm -hmm. And I will write it over here, a is dv over dt, and v is dr over dt. Perfect. Let's see what happens over here. This expression is obviously equal to zero. And this is because the vector v and our linear momentum, m times v, are collinear vector, and consequently their vector product is equal to zero. And as the result, we have first derivative with respect to time of our ho is r cross m times a. Let us assume that the motion of our particle is created and sustained by a number of forces. Let this be the first force, F1. Let this be the second force, F2. And let us assume that we have N forces acting on our particle. Then, from the second Newton's law, we know that mass times the acceleration of our particle is actually equal to sum of all the forces acting on our particle. Let us substitute this important expression over here. And as the result, we obtain R cross sum I goes from 1 to N F I. Let's analyze this expression. R cross F1 is the moment of the force F1 with respect to the point O. Then, R cross F2 is the moment of the force F2 with respect to the point O, etc. And consequently, our final expression for the first derivative of HO becomes sum of all the moments of all the forces acting on the system, where i goes from 1 to n. And this is very important law. Let us repeat this. The sum of the moments about O of the forces acting on the particle is equal to the rate of change of angular momentum of the particle around O. Let's repeat. The sum of the moments about O of the forces acting on the particle is equal to the rate of change of the angular momentum of the particle around the point O. And this is a very important law. Okay, that will be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much.